The Attleboro YMCA has been a pillar in the community for 147 years, and a generous gift will allow for it to continue into the future. The Augit Foundation recently donated $3 million to the Y. The donation is the largest in the organization's history. It will allow for extensive renovations to begin at the Y, including fixes to the pools and locker rooms. To find out more about this generous gift, we spoke with Attleboro YMCA CEO Robin McDonald. Hi, my name is Robin McDonald. I'm the CEO of the Attleboro Y and I uh, have the opportunity to talk this morning a little bit about the recent gift that the YMCA received from the Augit Foundation. The type of gift that the Augit Foundation has given us is really a one in a lifetime for a Y and gives us the opportunity really for uh, many, many years to come to benefit from the gift. Uh, the gift is a $3 million gift and would be the largest gift that the Attleboro Y ever received. And the, uh, the way the gift was given to us, it really is a gift that we'll keep on giving. We received uh, $2 million that will go into the YMCA Endowment Fund and uh, each year we'll have the opportunity to spend the earnings on that $2 million and we expect that to be about $80,000 each year that we'll be able to put into the capital um, needs of these uh, facilities that we have here, downtown Attleboro, uh, Pleasant Street, and then also at Camp Finberg. So we're really excited about that and the fact that that gift will annually allow us to better the why. The other million dollars will go into the renovations of the pool, uh, the locker rooms, and really the basement floor, which we're here in um, for this filming. The um, first phase of work will be really planning. This is about a 5,000 square foot uh, floor, and we have seven locker rooms, this carpenter gym that we stand in, two racquetball courts, two squash courts, and two pools. And so with uh, those facilities, our work will be to plan uh, the best use of the floor, uh, a new layout that will likely have us minimize the number of locker rooms. Uh, we expect we'll probably have at least two less than we have right now and uh, provide direct access from locker rooms to the pool. So we're excited about that. Uh, we'll start the planning process uh, shortly and uh, decide what's the highest and best use of this floor, the best layout, and uh, then we'll work probably in 2016 with uh, architects to um, actually put our concepts uh, into a design. Uh, and you could expect that sometime in early 2017, uh, we would actually start the construction. So the why, uh, like, like many organizations, we need to stay on a continual path of improvement. And with that means uh, continuing to reinvest in the infrastructure and the building and uh, you know, keep it up. Um, prior to any of the work that we'll do in the locker rooms and the pool, we'll be doing some work really on the North Main Street uh, uh, side of the Y. Uh, back in 1998, the main entrance off of Main Street was abandoned and uh, moved to the Sanford Street side where the main entrance is now for the downtown branch. And uh, that was done for safety and uh, access from parking. The front entrance really has looked rather um, it hasn't looked like uh, the main entrance of a building. Uh, you're not quite sure whether the Y is open when you drive by or walk up to the door. So uh, we'd really like to approach um, you know, fixing that so that there's more greenery, there's a little bit more activity, and uh, a little bit more vibrance on the North Main Street side. So we do have some plans to uh, put some fencing up, some plantings, um, and make that area uh, look a little bit more lively. We don't want to make it look like the main entrance of the Y, but certainly an area where people may come and go. So we're working on that. Uh, we hope that this spring we'll be doing some work on the North Main Street, and we collaborating with the city and uh, their cityscape uh, street plan uh, for that work so you know a donation like this uh, is something that comes over time and uh, forming of relationships and uh, you know I think as the story would go this gift uh, probably was put in the work sometime in the 1950s when a relationship between then the executive director Bill Bungard of the Y and uh, Mr. Augett uh, their relationship as friends, uh, community leaders, and, and business people um, had them agree on what some of the key com uh, components are to a strong community. And uh, if you hear some of their friends talk, uh, you know they had a, probably a mutual agreement that uh, churches, schools, YMCA, and hospital were the key things that uh, helped to strengthen a community, provide healthy uh, activities and options for families. And so with that agreement, uh, certainly 
uh, that paved the way for conversations about how to make sure that those institutions were strong in, in a community that they felt very strong about. Mr. Augett started a foundation in uh, 1986 and with that uh, named the YMCA as one of the uh, key charities. Uh, so when somebody says, you know, kind of uh, how long has this been in the works, you know, I, I'm going to say 50 years, of, uh, and, and in truth, those relationships between the Augett Foundation trustees and the Y were maintained over those 50 years. Uh, the good work that we've tried to do, uh, certainly, uh, you know, over that time, I think uh, justified in the trustees' mind uh, a gift of this size to make sure that the Y was supported by the Augett Foundation for, uh, you know, another 50 years and decades to come. So uh, it's an exciting gift for us, and uh, we really, um, we can't thank the Augett Foundation, uh, the trustees of the Augett Foundation, and certainly the forethought of Ernie Augett for this type of gift.